Greetings, human. Click that subscribe button. I have seen more horror films than you can imagine. I love the horror movie genre. Now let's get into this. Wes Craven is an executive producer for this film. Annie wrote the screenplay, came up with the story. This is important because he's the man that created A Nightmare on Elm Street, created Freddy Krueger. So it's nice to have him in the mix, especially for those of us that love the first film. But the director for this particular installment is a guy named Chuck Russell. And it's interesting to see what he does with Freddy as opposed to what Wes did, who is the man who created Freddy, right? So whenever you have somebody else filling in for the original director, for the original creator, it can be a test of your patience. You know, some individuals will hate that. Some will be willing to give it a chance. I decided to give it a chance. As far as the opening for this film is concerned, it is a million times better than the second film. The second film, when it opened up with that opening scene, I was like, nah, this is this is not Freddy. This feels off. This feels kind of flat. So I'm glad that they improved the opening sequence because how a movie starts is very important. That's the first impression. And seeing a room full of bodies hanging was not only creepy, but artistic at the same time. Some of you won't understand what the fuck I just said, but when it comes to horror films, it's very important to leave lasting visuals on your audience. To where when they're done with the experience, they think about certain moments, certain scenes. That shit is important. Imagine going into a room and you see a bunch of bodies hanging from the ceiling. That's going to scare the fuck out of most individuals. We're talking about the piss trickling down the leg and everything. For this installment of A Nightmare on Elm Street, we spend a lot of time in a psychiatric hospital. When I was in high school, the humans placed me in a mental institution. Illegally, I might add. I got out in a couple of days. But my thing is, it doesn't matter who you talk to. It doesn't matter how many movies or shows that you see centered around such an environment. It is nothing like actually being there. So for someone like myself who's been in that kind of environment, I can tell you that the way it's depicted in this film is accurate. It is. You do or say the wrong thing, you will never get out. They will constantly want you to take medication and all kinds of crazy ass shit. So imagine the characters in this film. Kristen and all the other characters that you see. They're already dealing with their own mental issues and humans have decided to lock them away. But on top of all that, they got to deal with Freddy too. I was like, they need some fucking help. They need some fucking help. Nancy comes back into the equation. I was like, yes. She was missed in the second installment. Because she has a lot of experience dealing with Freddy. And she's a survivor of dealing with Freddy. And she was so brave. If anybody can help the individuals in this situation. It's Nancy. We find out that the Kristen character is very important. Because she is able to pull individuals into her dreams. That's a very uh, strong ability. A strong power. But without experience. Without knowing what to do. You can have a very good ability. A powerful ability. But you could still get your shit wrecked. That's why Nancy being in this film is important. And you can argue that without Nancy in this movie, all these fucking characters would have been dead as shit. On a scale from 1 to 10. 1 being horseshit on a hot, smelly ass day. And 10 being mind-blowingly amazing. I'm going to give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. It's better than the second film, but nowhere near as good as the first. But at least this is better 
than the second film because usually the third film is the worst. But in this case, it's the better sequel. But still not good enough. But the ability to pull someone into your dreams is awesome. I like that kind of concept. I wish they would have explored that more with the Kristen character. Gave us more backstory on her. Because as she is as a character in the context of this story is interesting. But there isn't enough with her character to make her character compelling. At most, she just comes across as cool and you wish you had more details. And Larry Fishburne, Lawrence Fishburne is in this movie. That's right, uh, Morpheus himself. So you get some cool points for that. And uh, Nancy being in this installment is definitely a plus because she's an OG. If anybody knows how to deal with Freddy, fight him and all that is definitely Nancy. And there are a bunch of crazy sequences that you would expect while watching a Freddy film. So this movie does get some stuff right, but it doesn't get everything right. And you also are talking about a waste of potential with certain moments and certain characters. But it still is better than the second film. But the first film is a masterpiece. It's not only one of the best horror films ever made, but it's one of the best movies ever made. A film that I think any sort of movie enthusiast should watch. Like if you had a list of a thousand films that you should watch before you die, the original A Nightmare on Elm Street is one of them. I'm just being honest with you. This is not about, oh, I like this genre, I like that genre. It's just about the quality of film and storytelling and what it was able to accomplish within that. And this movie does accomplish some things, but it still reminds you of how great the first movie is and how the sequels have fallen short to a large degree. Shout out to Robert England. Shout out to Wes Craven. R.I.P. Wes Craven. Terrence out.